want to welcome everyone to the next talk in our alumni uh, leadership series. Uh, today's uh, speaker is um, Vinod Archi. Uh, he's a BTEC 1991 from IIT Madras, and he's currently the uh, global head of um, regional markets for Standard Chartered Bank. He's based in Singapore. Um, he has a management degree also from IIM Calcutta in 1993. Um, he had been with J.P. Morgan in Singapore and with ICICI Securities in Mumbai as well as with Tata IBM in Mumbai earlier. And before Standard Chartered Bank, he was with Deutsche Bank for 11 years. Um, and he led the Asia division from 2002. Uh, currently, he is uh, providing leadership and direction for regional, country, and product heads to execute Standard Chartered Bank's overall uh, WB strategy. Um, he's responsible for sustaining client focus across footprint and ensuring implementation and supervision of the governance framework. He also drives the product and client structuring business and development while sustaining the long-term growth of the global business. He's a huge advocate for mentoring individuals as he spearheads the FM Junior Talent Sourcing. And I hope that he's going to join our mentoring program and uh, start. Are you a member of the mentoring program? We have an online mentoring program. I'm sure Gopi can tell you all about it. So, um, so we are very happy to uh, welcome Vinod to give his talk today. It's OK. I'll just uh, I'd like to thank Professor Nagarajan and Suresh for giving this opportunity. It's obviously always a, a huge honor to be uh, invited by alma mater to, uh, to come and uh, speak. Uh, I, I never uh, uh, thought it would be uh, <laughs> this soon or this early yeah, uh, in terms of uh, coming back to uh, uh, IIT Madras. And uh, what really shocked me was when walking, when I just uh, entered into the campus with the, with the poster. So that was, uh, I would I definitely say intimidating because it was kind of raising expectations far higher than uh, you know, what I uh, initially set out. But uh, you know, when uh, again Professor Nagarajan Suresh, uh, you know, uh, asked me to speak, you know, and uh, and I looked at the uh, list of all the speakers in the past, it was clear that I definitely am in no position to do any conversation or talk on technology. It's uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm you know I'm a dinosaur uh, in, in many ways from a tech perspective. Um, so it was a bit of a challenge to figure out as to what I really wanted to come and talk about. Um, you know, I was thinking more like China, India, you know, some of the experiences of mine. But um, a colleague of mine who is an alumnus of uh, US school, Duke school, he said, you know, you, you, it's better to be ragged than put guys to sleep in a classroom. So, so uh, and you know, given that most of you are probably in final year or coming close to the final year, you know, something around, uh, you know, careers would be of interest, probably, you know, neutral enough topic um, and something that I can uh, speak to as being more current. Uh, than uh, in technology, so hence I picked um, you know this op uh, opportunity to kind of talk to you about you know what makes uh, you know a career success you know and, uh, uh, and 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 instead of just talking about myself, I thought I'll I'll uh, showcase three four different uh, friends of mine you know people who know pretty well you know in different uh, fields who've done very well in you know in in uh, in various uh, uh, you know uh, aspects of life. And uh, and kind of share with you their uh, philosophies and what they thought, and uh, and you know I'm happy to uh, and then I share my own too. But uh, more importantly is at any point in time, honestly you can uh, you know we can go into more detail and depth about any of them. Um, and to the extent that I know, I'm happy to share uh, you know their uh, you know secrets of success. Before uh, I, I get into the uh, meat of it, um, I just wanted to give you a brief, uh, you know, uh, introduction to uh, IITNs uh, in the Far East. Um, I mean, IITNs are normally associated with either the US or uh, India. Um, very few people have an idea as to how many uh, IITNs are out there um, in other parts of the world. And um, Far East across Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, you'd be surprised to find that there are a lot more IITNs over there than what uh, conventional wisdom uh, would, uh, you know, uh, tend you to believe. Um, I mean, in Singapore itself, um, you know, there are over uh, almost five lakh uh, Indians, you know, uh, both like you know, long, 
you know, multi generational Indians in Singapore and many of the professionals uh, who moved over the last uh, couple of decades. But uh, last count, um, you know, it is not an accurate figure, but there are about 1500 plus um, IITNs in Singapore. Um, I have just been uh, conservative with 1000 plus over there because um, I know, uh, I am also the, uh, I also uh, hold the post of the being president of the Pan IIT Association, Army Association for Singapore. And in our own database, uh, you know, we, we have over 600 people that we know of, and there are, uh, you know, many more uh, that aren't active. So, it's over 1500 people. So, it is uh, that is just Singapore alone. And in Hong Kong, there are a few hundred of them, and, uh, and in Japan, few more. But even in places like Indonesia, I mean, you will be surprised in Jakarta that there are over 100 IITNs in, in Jakarta alone. So, uh, Far East has been basically, uh, you know, uh, a reasonably uh, decent magnet, you know, over the last uh, uh, few years. Uh, for IITNs and definitely, uh, you know, uh, been opportunities out there. Um, and so, in, in Singapore in particular, I mean, most of the guys are either in tech or banking. Uh, the several of them over the years have also become entrepreneurs. So, there are several entrepreneurs, very successful entrepreneurs, um, you know, who uh, uh, have a fair bit of, uh, who have a, you know, presence and stature in Singapore uh, itself, you know, very well known to, uh, uh, to uh, the government and, and senior officials. Um, in uh, 2012, uh, last year, we had a, a pan IT event for Asia Pac, um, first time we had after outside of US and India. And the, the interesting part of it was the, the sponsors, the kind of support was right from the top. You know, you had the president and ex-president of, uh, of Singapore, you had uh, three ministers from the government, all of them, you know, engaged in, 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 in making it successful. So, in terms of sheer brand equity and brand uh, awareness, you know, IT um, is, uh, is seen as uh, is uh, as something that uh, uh, you know one has passed to and, and and something that they want Singapore to be associated with. In fact, they have engaged the government of India on several occasions to have an IIT in Singapore. Um, so that's the uh, you know extent of their interest. So it's very very interesting. Um, within uh, uh, you know to improve brand awareness and you know to further uh, you know uh, build on it, um, we uh, have been working with uh, some of the IITs with MOUs and. And both from a R&D perspective and from uh, you know faculty and you know postgraduate you know, students exchange perspective. In fact, R Professor Raj Srivastava, who is the provost of Singapore Management University, is a big proponent of that, and he's he's an IIT Kanpur alumnus, and hence uh, you know very strong tie-ups with IIT Kanpur these days. Um, and we also try and support as many as possible on the internship side. And you know, just uh, coming out of a meeting, you know, uh, talking about internships. Uh, uh, and uh, there are several, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, you know uh, professionals working in various organizations. Been quite keen on offering uh, internships uh, for students. And over the years, we've done anywhere between 15 to 20 uh, internships. You know, finally, the maximum number of interns we get is from Karakpur. So KGP is uh, is, uh, is probably. And lately, we've been getting even from Guwahati and uh, and uh, you know Bombay uh, for uh, you know been other ideas. But KGP has been a big uh, you know uh, supplier of interns. Um, and and we do have uh, people, several people quite interested in having interns, and we all face face challenges in terms of um, you know cost and sponsoring of the students. I mean that's something uh, that we need to figure out as to uh, how we address. But uh, but fundamentally, like this, uh, there's ability to uh, take a lot more uh, you know IIT and on internships into Singapore. That's something that we uh, you know help uh, facilitate as much as possible. Um, and uh, and then of course uh, we have uh, fairly well networked uh, alumnus over there. Uh, so, clearly, I mean, they, uh, the uh, details of us, who we are, what we are, is everything available online. Um, I'd encourage if you want to reach out to us, you can just go to our website and you have our details ranging from names, numbers, emails, the whole world. So, it's a pretty open uh, uh, you know, architecture. So, I, I wanted to spend uh, you know uh, some time uh, talking about few individuals. Um, again, friends of mine, um, you know, known them over the years. Um, fairly successful in their field. Um, again, as I, I would definitely encourage you know uh, you guys to stop me at any point in time, and we can discuss any one of them or any of the aspects in greater detail. Um, Shupriya Sarkar, uh, he is uh, uh, head of uh, Polaris Software for uh, Asia Pac, uh, EMEA. You know, basically anything outside of US and Europe. Um, he is a Kharagpur uh, LC uh, graduate. Um, and then went to I am uh, Bangalore. Uh, Dr. Sham Prabhakar is a Jamna, 
uh, Gemnite, so he is from JAM and he was one year junior to me, um, extremely brilliant, uh, you know, uh, smart guy, you know, uh, uh, very methodical, you know, he is a scientist at uh, the Genome Institute of uh, Singapore. He is one of the big sponsors of interns, you know, into the bio, uh, you know, genetics uh, space and he can take uh, kids uh, interested in that. Harish Nim is, uh, is an entrepreneur now, um, again very uh, interesting and checkered uh, career and uh, he uh, set up the company called Emerio, uh, which is a huge, uh, uh, fairly successful uh, uh, IT uh, services company and of course myself, uh, uh, Professor Nagarajan has been kind enough to introduce me, um, currently with Standard Chartered. So, um, let me go into a bit more of detail on each one of them. So, Polaris Software, I am sure uh, all of you have heard of uh, Polaris Software, um, but uh, you know Shapiro did not get uh, here directly um, you know into Polaris, uh, you know, he has been all over the world. I mean he, he got into uh, IT technology uh, uh, soon after uh, uh, his MBA, um, you know worked in the US, you know came back wanted to be an entrepreneur, he started a software company of his own uh, in, uh, in India and then couple of years later then said to go back to the industry. And, uh, and then over the years, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, went up the ranks of management ranks of uh, Polaris. And uh, what is, uh, you know, interesting about uh, uh, Shipra, Shipra is one of most um, really bubbly engaging and in a lot of full high energy characters. I mean, he is a phenomenal networker, he is one of the founding fathers of the uh, Pan IIT Alumni Association in Singapore. He is, he is great at networking and, is, and he basically, uh, uh, helped uh, you know build the initial uh, you know community of uh, IIT alumni in uh, in Singapore, and in Polaris, I mean when you asked him like you know what what would he uh, you know con uh, attribute his success to, and it comes down to essentially uh, attitude, and uh, and one of the things he says and he practices himself is being uh, uh, being more than uh, uh, you know smart and intelligent. And a studious uh, person. I think that's something that's that's uh, something that comes uh, through again and again in the whole team. And uh, this being an IITN essentially gets you the uh, kind of you, takes you past the uh, the hygiene factors really. You know. So seventy percent in his in his uh, in his own words is the fact that it's a it's an area of culture of excellence. There's peer pressure. There's a there's certain standard that gets you uh, your basic uh, you know hygiene factor and then the 30 percent of it really comes down to your you know uh, academic aspect of it as to what you want. But what really separates beyond that is essentially what you do outside your academic area. And that is one thing he has, he attributes his entire co-curricular activities, extracurricular activities, what he did you know in terms of sports and in, in team activities really is something that helped you know, uh, kind of make him a much, much more well-rounded person. And is absolutely don'ts. Says please do not rush into taking a decision right away. I think that's one uh, thing is that the difference between our time and your time in terms of careers and choices is that at that point in time we didn't have much information. It was basically uh, word of mouth of uh, you know alumni seniors. And really went by what your senior said. At this point in time, you've got surfeit of information. You probably got too much information in terms of what's out there, and uh, and it's all the more reason that it's important that you don't act actually take a hasty decision or the first one or something, but but actually take the time and effort to do the due diligence around it. I mean, that's something that you know strongly you know recommends. And his slogan, "Where there's a will, there's a way," that's fairly cliched and. Uh, well one in some ways, but but what his essential uh, you know uh, point is that you you can as a well-rounded individual much beyond uh, you know academic make an effort you will basically get the kind of opportunity kind of stuff a job that you are interested in rather than get the spread into the first one out. I asked him what would he do if he had a choice to. Uh, go all over again. He said he would like to be a physicist, but he realized that it was a bit too late. By then it was too late as not too much of a uh, flexibility. 
And uh, once again, it says please do not take the first job that comes along. It's about doing your due diligence and and wait wait for the right one, something that you really like enjoy doing. Dr. Shyam Prabhakar, I mean, uh, as I said, you know, if you want to spend any further time on either of them, please let me know. So he is, as I said, he's a IIT Madras Jam uh, graduate of 1992. He stayed true to his. Uh, you know, academic uh, roots. He's always been a curious and an academic-oriented uh, uh, person. Um, he went to uh, the U.S. Um, got himself a Ph.D. Um, his Stanford, uh, uh, you know, doctorate, and uh, he has several awards uh, to his credit and uh, several papers to his credit. And the interesting thing is the reason why he went into biogenetics and uh, genome, uh, genomics was simply because he wanted to get back to India and after having done his PhD in Stanford, he found that there wasn't much that he could do in India with that kind of a degree qualification. But genomics were coming, I was coming up, uh, you know, in India getting popular and, uh, and this was something that uh, he could apply to come back to India and hence that uh, kind of influenced his decision to get into it. And then he really enjoyed it in so much the fact that he attributes a lot of his success in genomics to his LC engineering uh, skills and his physics. He says he could apply what he studied, what he learned in electronics and communications engineering to genomics to basically solve some of the problems that were not, that was unsolvable or not, not solved uh, by traditional, uh, uh, you know, approaches. So that was his, uh, you know, real, con uh, that was his contribution to the genomics field which kind of, you know, uh, brought him with the attention of uh, into the Singapore government and he was invited into uh, to join the uh, Biogenetics Institute and he's been there for a few years now uh, with several, uh, you know, patents to his credit, sorry, uh, papers to his credit. So he's, he's a pretty interesting character in the sense that uh, he, uh, he goes to the absolute core basics, details of everything. I mean, he questions everything. His curiosity level is extremely high. And that's something he attributes is the primary, absolutely primary requirement for anybody getting into the scientific field. You have to be curious, extremely curious and willing to question the, the very nature of whatever you're examining. What is the core essence of the problem is, is the way he puts it. And his don'ts basically said, says, please do not be afraid to fail. It's perfectly fine to not get it right but uh, to keep trying and, and unless you fail a few times, you are unlikely to succeed. And if he had to do something differently, he wished basically that he had flexibility in choosing what he had to do, but uh, the system quite didn't quite uh, allow for that. But I do know there is a fair bit of debate these days in IT which kind of allow a far more flexibility in the, in the uh, the way you pick your courses when you study. I know quite a few guys uh, have ambitions or harbor intentions to uh, become an entrepreneur. Harish Nim is a very successful uh, entrepreneur in Singapore, one of the top 50 companies that he built from scratch uh, about 10 years ago and sold recently to Entity Communications. And uh, Harish is the classic case of what an entrepreneur looks like and we all know entrepreneurs are risk takers. They have a fundamental, you know, uh, willingness to uh, uh, take this, they, they take decisions, they take risks when many <coughs> others would hesitate. He started off selling motorbikes, Enfield. He followed his passion. He loved motorbikes, so he went to sell uh, motorbikes for Enfield. And then he went into, uh, into, uh, into sales uh, in a computer firm and then come continued with Pertec computers for a fair bit of time and set up their international operations. But he always had the itch to leave and start something on his own. And that's what he did about 10 odd years ago, started uh, a media 15 years ago and built from scratch. And right through the process at every single, the decisions that he took to leave uh, India when he had a good, uh, well paid, comfortable life to start all over again in Singapore um, in a small uh, company. Uh, and then subsequently uh, leaving the company when he uh, set it up and established into an international, uh, you know, a marketing hub 
to start something of its own, each one of them were fairly unconventional, fairly risky decisions. But his core philosophy is that to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to follow your heart, not your head. If you analyze too much, you are unlikely to, to set off on your own. You are probably better off where you are. So, this fair bit of irrational decision making along the way, but that is that's what is required to be a successful entrepreneur. He wanted to be an English professor he had, until he got admission to IIT and then he had no choice. So, so his, uh, I, his uh, advice to entrepreneurs, he says, his ideas just, uh, only ideas matter. You know, if you have the idea and you follow the idea, money will follow. So, it is it's not money before the idea, but idea is the primary uh, driver. And the only other practical advice he had was always watch your cash flow. If you are going to be an entrepreneur, always have more money than you need and that is the conservative approach that will keep you alive through the tough times. I would like to spend some time on my own uh, experiences and uh, before uh, uh, throw up into Q and A. So, I am I am a Godav guy, uh, batch of 91 mechanical and after uh, IIT I went to uh, IMCAL and then uh, in some ways I did follow my heart in terms of joining IBM uh, because it, it, it came back uh, after a decade and a half and that was something that I thought uh, would be exciting you know, getting back to IIT and uh, going and working for IBM. But uh, in about a year and a half, uh, it was clear that that was not my uh, you know, strength and my uh, core competence. And, uh, and I moved to uh, ICC Securities, which was the JP Morgan venture in India and uh, started all over again. And couple of years later, I uh, got the opportunity to move from, <coughs> from Bombay to uh, JP Morgan in New York and Singapore. And then subsequently, I moved to Deutsche Bank, um, all in the investment banking side. And about five years ago, I moved over to Standard Chartered. I spent bulk of it, about 11 years with, uh, uh, with, with Deutsche in between and about three odd years in the ISEC JP Morgan combination. Now, what is my uh, kind of a key takeaway in my, through my career? Huh? What influenced me pretty early and around 97, I moved to Hong Kong is my exposure to Hong Kong and Singapore. And, and it is basically the discipline of, of what China is all about is, is phenomenal. I mean, I, you know, we as Indians uh, celebrate our whole jugaad, uh, you know, uh, uh, nature of us, you know, that we have managed to figure out where, uh, where uh, you know, our ingenuity and, you know, manage to firefight any of the situation. But, you know, a lot of it is down to because we do not plan well enough and, you know, in advance and we are always firefighting because you know, we did not uh, have the fast side to get it right in the first place. And I think that is something that, you know, China and Hong Kong definitely, uh, I, I, I confess that I am no uh, practitioner of any uh, uh, great degree of the art of uh, the science of, uh, you know, planning. It is still a work in progress, but, but that is something that has been, that's been an early, early influence in my, uh, in my career. So, what, what did I take away from IIT itself and what I realized along the way is about focusing on the first principles. You know, I know all of us have been, it has been drilled into us, you know, on the first principles aspect. And in many ways, you realize that pretty late in life as to how important first principles, you know, uh, understanding and knowing and, and building uh, as, as a building block is. The second thing is definitely leadership matters. I mean, in general, people largely look forward, look to people to provide guidance, to lead them, to tell them what needs to be done and how. And I think that is critical and no matter how much of an expert you are and whatever your domain uh, knowledge is, if you are unwilling to step up and take the opportunity when provided, that is that that's basically unpardonable in terms of the career progression. And the third thing definitely, the thing I have learned is on diversity. And having worked outside India for the last 15, 17 years in, with, in, in various uh, cities and exposure to various cultures, 
I think that diversity of cultures is pretty critical, and especially if you are willing to embrace and work with them and understand and have that diversity of opinion. And hiring strong, you know, makes a big difference. And if you can appreciate those differences and manage them, that's a huge uh, boost to career. So, what would I like to leave few things uh, in terms of uh, takeaways? I think one of the things I do find, you know, uh, and I recruit a lot uh, from various institutes. Uh, I used to recruit heavily from India. And also recruit uh, globally, and one of the things I uh, uh, do reiterate often to, especially uh, students from India, is to lose the entitlement culture very, very quickly. And uh, and I and, and I do find it quite often, you know, especially uh, you know from top schools in India, and uh, and that's that's important because once you kind of get rid of it and you're willing to do uh, pick up whatever skills come along the way as opportunities. I mean, that makes a complete difference. And it comes back to the thing is first principles, picking up basic skills and accepting that no, no task, no skill is, is too uh, immaterial. Being a team player, I mean, I, the other aspect I, uh, it's, it's quite common is that we are all quite comfortable in some ways operating in a, in a on a project in an individualistic manner or solving something. But life in general or you know, working in a, in, a, in, a, in a corporate environment is a lot more about working together in a team. And then having the ability to handle diversity and have, have an ability to appreciate and, and enjoy the diverse uh, views and, uh, and, uh, and you know, uh, ways and methods of working, I think that is critical. And I will reiterate a point that was made earlier in terms of do not take the first thing that comes along, look for what really interests you and you are passionate about and follow that. And in my own uh, experience, when I, uh, after 15 months in IBM, when I realized it was not quite what it was, uh, what I thought it would be, and you really, really know the first time, you know, when you are 17, 18, or 21, or 23, or when you are doing your thing for the first time. And accepting that that was the case and willing to take a haircut to go back to, uh, to square one to begin with, with the students who were one, two years uh, junior to me was, was the most important and critical decision of my career. And it was quite easy to say that, you know, I am not going to sacrifice my seniority, but, but doing that and then getting into something that I was passionate about and keen on made all the difference. Because you can, you know, more than make up all the supposed deemed loss of years if you are in the right place. That is supposed to be hard. And finally, a big boost has been through the mentoring aspect. And mentoring is not about just giving, uh, you know, uh, opportunities and, you know, guiding and, 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 and training people. But what you, rea you do not realize is it is actually your personal alumni. You know, all the people that you help, you train, and when they go out and they succeed, or if they are in your own team and succeed and they provide you the kind of leverage that is required for you to grow much, to, to move up much quicker, much faster. And career progression is really huge, uh, hugely dependent on your personal alumni. I dare not say that in, uh, in Chinese and I would probably get it all wrong, but that is largely what is supposed to convey. You got to have a well rounded all round personality. Be out there, be beyond academics, participate, you know, you got to take initiative. And, and when you step out and take initiative and, and especially show leadership, I mean, that is basically when you have people who follow you. And leaders are all about followers. Leaders without followers are basically, I mean, it is an oxymoron. So that is kind of a, in a nutshell, you know, what I wanted to share with you. But, uh, you know, I did not want to spend too much time on a, on a, on a talk lecture kind of a mode. Happy to uh, answer question answers, you know, uh, about my own career, about my colleagues or anything else for that matter. And I do know that uh, banking in general is, is, is of uh, great interest and uh, um, from your own uh,
career perspective uh, if this I'm more than happy to address any questions in that regard too thank you Look, I think there is no easy answer for that. It is all a trial and error, right. So, the first opportunity or first job or whatever you do may may not be what uh, you know uh, you want to do at the end of the day. But the fact is that is only a door uh, you know door opening like you know foot in the door, right. You, you, you step out there and then when you start exploring that is when you realize. And again once again you know you guys have an advantage of having access to a lot of information right now in the world. I think the most important thing is to like go out and speak to people who do various things in life or you know whatever you think you want to explore, ask them what their job means or what they do or what it is and that is the thing is critical. You have to have a personal input from people and and sitting out here or by yourself or using the internet is, is not good enough for you to you know get a feel for that. And this is basically where you should reach out you know whether it is you know whether it is alumni or you know people otherwise that you know or, or through contacts is if not anything else just to understand as to what they do and how they do it. and what is it that in interests them and excites them and and that is that is important that is part of the due diligence process that is required. And if it is not now maybe uh, you know uh, through your internships or uh, you know when you do your first um, role job or uh, you know, whatever it is that you do I think all the time you, know, you basically need to like explore and, 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 and figure out because there is no rule there is no guarantee that the first thing that you do is what you would like. Good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I noted from your timeline that you had done an MBA from I am Calcutta straight out of college. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this might be more of a personal question, but a lot of us have a dilemma uh, whether this idea of doing an MBA straight out of college is a good one or not. So, after having an experience in industry for almost 20 years, what would your advice be to the students here? That's my first question. And the second thing is, uh, you might be aware of a trend that a lot of IITians are very keen on uh, joining the financial markets after straight out of college, and they do not have a very good idea about what I mean to put it better, to structure it better, we do not have a very clear idea what skills are required in that field and what do they need, what are the skills they need to focus at IIT to succeed in that. Can you throw some light on that? Yeah. Look, on your first question, at the end of the day, um, uh, let me tell you at that point in time, like 20 odd years ago, um, in many ways, whether it was going to IIM or what, it was very much a filtering process of getting into. Uh, a placement and a job pool or in, or in a profession more than anything else. So, uh, was it, it was not a classic uh, in a US style whereby you graduate, you work for a bit and then you come back for an MBA having a better idea as to what the work environment is and then to figure out. It, it, it was to a large extent very much okay if I want to like you know move into a certain uh, professional field whether it is marketing, whether it is consultancy, whether it is uh, thing, this is the uh, you know easy way to get into that job pool. Right. At the end of the day, you are trying to target essentially that placement process at the end of uh, two years. That really drove a lot of the decision making at that point in time. And, uh, and in many ways, I do not know if it is very different even now as to uh, you, know, you know if you look at the, uh, the way placement processes work and if you are uh, Procter and Gamble or if you are uh, Hindustan Lever or if you are uh, or a bank or, uh, or, or McKinsey, where do you go, you know which campuses do you go to recruit. I mean that is becomes a much more of a determining factor than anything else. Um, I think that is my uh, you know uh, take of it. But the reason whether you should go to an MBA soon after or, or uh, IIT or not is basically depending on like you know fundamentally is engineering and the field that you want to work in is, is, is that is that is your passion that is your interest that is that is what you are keen on. And I think that is what uh, I mean unless you try that out if you are interested you would never know. It's so, I mean it, in many ways you have to be absolutely clear in your mind you know that you are actually like not getting into engineering you are getting into something absolutely different and, uh, and the MBA is the route to essentially change track. Um, but you know these days if you look at most of the IIMs about 
50, 60 percent of them are with work experience, at least having worked two, three years. So, uh, so that trend has changed over the last 20 years, where probably in my time, where it was about 15, 20 percent maximum had work experience, and it was much more of a, um, you know, uh, change tracks rather than, you know, work, figure out, understand, and then, you know, make a decision. Uh, in terms of financial uh, service sector, look, you know, uh, I think uh, engineers in particular disproportionately apply to uh, uh, to the industry um, because the standard stereotypical, uh, you know, understanding is that I'm good at math, I'm good at analytical stuff, and hence I'll be good at banks and then banking industry. Unfortunately, that's uh, uh, that logic, and I can apply to every single industry, you know, um, not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, finance alone. And and I think what works for finance industry is equally applicable whether it is a marketing industry or or uh, or uh, consultancy. And a lot of the stuff that I was mentioning about are the, the, the key element really differentiates is still soft skills and the EQ element of it. You know the ability to uh, to communicate, to work in teams, um, you know uh, be adaptable, flexible. I mean they count for a lot more, you know and ability to network and connect with people, uh, be uh, willingness to uh, have the willingness to step into uh, situations uh, where you need to provide leadership and you do not hesitate to do so. I mean, they are far more important, you know, than, uh, but again, as I said, I would say all these uh, qualities apply to any other role, any other industry, any other job. It is nothing, uh, you know, unique or uh, specific about it. And uh, and if you look at uh, typical uh, bank recruiting programs, again, as I said, I have recruited heavily over the years for the banks. From UK, we recruit people who are, known, who are from Oxford and Cambridge and and various universities with uh, bachelor's degrees in arts, you know, sciences, you know, not necessarily engineers. In fact, engineers are rare commodity. Um, and you know, we we go to China, we get a whole uh, variety of people, Korea. So it's it's basically the filtering system of India that kind of funnels the engineers more towards the uh, thing. But but I would say in terms of skill set, you know, uh, it it's it's not any different from what would make you succeed in any other profession for the matter. Again, it's I would say like a lot of it is is probably our, our stereotypes or like you know things that you may have heard from others. Um, look, most of the banking finance jobs are you would realize are fundamentally client sales oriented kind of uh, roles. You know, uh, uh, marketing roles. You know, uh, you know it's just that you you de dealing with a different set of products, a financial uh, product instead of uh, you know any other. And if you're in FMCG, you're you're dealing with consumer goods. So bulk most of the financial uh, industry roles and jobs are uh, uh, client oriented sales oriented uh, roles and the things about doing tasks for you know uh, and then you know over a few hours i mean that's a very much uh, a niche kind of uh, uh, you know uh, understanding which revolves around you know maybe investment banking analysts you know in 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 certain divisions you know uh, where you are you've probably uh, heard or like you know listened to uh, or or you know uh, discussed with people but you know that's really not what uh, it's all about. You know, when you are an analyst, you know, when you're starting off uh, in any industry or any uh, job whatsoever, you would be doing various roles and tasks as required. I mean, you're learning, picking up skills. But it's very much part of a team effort, and you're very much part of a team. And uh, and and within finance in industry itself, there are a variety of roles, right? A variety of jobs and variety of uh, tasks. But almost all of them involve in some shape or form, you know, uh, you know, working on, uh, on on transactions and deals. Whether which are long gestation, you know, takes many months to do, or something that's quick and uh, you know fast, but uh, always as part of uh, a team, um, you know, uh, that's that's really the profile most of the time. Uh, there are very few uh, roles where you can actually go off and do something on your own, and that may be in analytics or you know something that is in the technology side. So that's basically it. The front end roles are always, uh, you know, much broader.
in, in many ways these days India is uh, you know, what you do in India is, is on par or you know it is it is not very different in terms of uh, the kind of uh, complexity or the, the challenge or, or the uh, content of roles you know as abroad uh, you know uh, the usual understanding is that you know if you are doing the job in New York or London it is far more you know uh, you know uh, you know challenging or or or, or in depth or or or, or, uh, or more glamorous, but uh, the the fact is that every every role, every country, every job comes with its own uh, set of complexity. If uh, if all uh, people are looking for uh, uh, complexity in terms of, and this is something that I get quite often, is um, I'm not working with something that's really complex models or numbers or or you know I'm not using my you know advanced uh, analytical and you know mathematical uh, skills. You know they're probably less than 0.1 percent of the jobs actually, or 1 percent of the jobs in the in the the marketplace. The complexity varies from place to place, like place like India or, or if you go to China or you go to Korea, the complexity is more about you know the domestic market conditions, the rules and regulations, the you know the uh, you know the uh, financial, financial infrastructure and uh, the needs of the clients and how do you manage to solve them in a more constrained environment. And in uh, if you go to places like New York or London, it could be something like the very well developed markets, you know much more uh, you know liquid. But the client challenges are, are a bit different, and you're trying to figure out as to how to solve for them. So, you know, every uh, you know market is going challenges. You know, that's it's, it's about are you willing to uh, accept that there is there are multiple uh, dimensions to complexity, and not just one that you're comfortable with. That is, if I don't have a calculus, uh, you know, equation to solve for, then it's not worth doing. But uh, trying to figure out what is um, you know fairly complex from a regulatory environment perspective, and that involves multiple countries and jurisdictions and legal infrastructure is that something interesting enough to work on. So, um, so each each uh, you know uh, obviously geography role responsibility has its own challenges and I would rate uh, you know uh, the, uh, the roles that uh, my colleagues do in India as probably one of the more challenging ones within the bank given the uh, circumstances under which they do. Sir, uh, as per your timeline, like uh, you have worked in many banks, uh, I was curious to know, like, uh, like how do you find the organization culture in all the banks, and uh, what, what what were your learnings from it, and how do you know exactly will the culture that you are getting into the organization will it fit with you or not? How do you before joining the organization, how do you find out whether the culture will fit with you or not? Uh, other than internship, like if you are not interning sure. with the company, then how do you get to know about the culture? Yeah. Yeah, of course, the internship is the best way to know, but. I, each organization is like an individual, like it is quite unique, I mean have their own uh, culture, uh, it is basically the way uh, they work and, uh, and I can say like you know uh, uh, from uh, I just if I just stick to the banks, JP Morgan, Deutsche and Stanchart, you know all three very, very uh, different uh, you know uh, banks and cultures all together. Uh, JP Morgan was very uh, at that point you know when I worked pre-mergers, etc. was a very blue blooded you know US investment bank took itself uh, very seriously uh, you know prim and proper kind of a thing. Deutsche was uh, is very uh, entrepreneurial kind of a culture. It had just uh, you know uh, transformed itself in the mid 90s into investment bank. So, it was uh, so you were very much part of the uh, you know uh, growth process. So, it was a very uh, you know can do you know whatever it takes kind of uh, environment. Uh, you know Stanchard where I work is a much more uh, um, collegial you know consensus driven a much more uh, committee based kind of a decision making you know uh, much more of a, a, a team uh, you know uh, a driven kind of a bank team was driven bank. So, they are all very different uh, cultures and, and I think it is important uh, uh, that one fits or enjoys or you know uh, uh, it is not it is never a perfect fit, but you need to feel comfortable and enjoy you know the culture you know for you to uh, succeed. If you are not enjoying yourself and if you are not comfortable you know you will be miserable, you will not succeed that is given and, and you better and frankly you will not know until you uh, join for sure, but again comes down to due diligence you know you got to talk to people who work in the place you know as to what it is, what it feels like you know how do you do various things you know how do you handle you know certain situations you know how does the bank uh, you know react to certain situations I mean that is that basically gives you a very good uh, you know uh, perspective and uh, and again there is no guarantee until you uh, you know do join, but uh, but that part part of due diligence is pretty critical, and and if you speak to people who've been who work in the organization long enough, um, you know you will have a very good idea, and um, 
and the other aspect is people change too you know you got to realize that you are not a, a you know a constant you know uh, you you are a variable yourself and uh, and in, in circumstances and, and, and time you vary you you adapt and you change uh, the kind of person you are and uh, and and and, uh, and organizations too evolve and change so sometimes uh, there is a match and a meet as you as you go along you know uh, down the line but but if you are not enjoying yourself you know i think uh, i think you better off as well good evening sir good evening sir uh, what is your opinion about uh, the brain drain of iit 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 and people who study technology here i mean uh, computer <coughs> technical and yes they have their own interest they go into different fields but uh, what is your opinion about uh, those who go abroad who go abroad settle there and <coughs> then uh, they don't come back or contribute to the country uh, what is your opinion well what's your practical uh, solution that's <laughs> you know uh, there's an element of being pragmatic and there's uh, uh, so i uh, definitely uh, fall in the camp of uh, somebody who has studied in iit and is and lives abroad now for 17 now 18 years now um, and i'd like to think that in uh, in in uh, in some shape or form uh, i i do contribute contribute back to society and to the country but uh, you know i don't think there's any uh, way you can uh, you know stop it you know uh, because in and it comes that's a question that comes up quite often and we when and we've debated over over our entire lives i would say since we joined iit among friends is that 17 and 18 you know years old you know what decision are you making you know um, you know the decision to come to iit is driven by a lot of other factors than uh, than what you're interested in in many ways right and uh, you know uh, some of the case studies that i mentioned um, you know harish said you know he'd love to have been an english professor um, or 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 writer um, but he was good at maths too and physics too so uh, so was uh, shupri you know uh, and uh, so in many ways if you are good if you are smart and if you are uh, you know uh, capable of uh, getting into iit you would choose to come into it because it it provides a certain platform and certain uh, you know uh, uh, an opportunity that you would not get otherwise uh, you know uh, traditional in india but subsequent decisions as to what you do with your life you know cannot you cannot force that to be a function of the fact that you spent 4 years in iit i mean that's 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 not practical and that's not pragmatic um, but uh, but frankly these days and you know i uh, you know many of my uh, uh, classmates who are in india who stayed in india and are entrepreneurs and are working here and they say like you know the uh, the talent pool now is far more diverse in fact they uh, they preferred hiring from stevens and and some of the other colleges you know uh, students Uh, that they find have uh, full of uh, you know enthusiastic you know uh, well rounded you know smart uh, curious you know willing to take uh, risks and chances so um, i would say these days there are more options and you don't have to you know uh, only go to an iit you know uh, uh, simply because you're good at uh, you know uh, uh, academics so uh, so that those alternatives are there and i think that's probably will probably help you know uh, Uh, I would say, like diversifying uh, the options out there for students, uh, but yeah, I have no answer to that, and I don't think uh, we should uh, uh, prohibit or like you know ban or do anything uh, of the sort. It it serves no for uh, no purpose, and uh, and 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 hopefully uh, along the way, you know, we all uh, figure out uh, our uh, angle and our uh, connectivity and, and 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 serve in our own way. Good evening, sir. So you spoke of uh, having an alternate passion, which is really important for networking. So in obviously uh, the early phase of career will be very challenging, especially in the financial market. Did you have time to pursue your alternate passion, and if so, what was it? No, I don't think uh, time was never the issue. I mean, it's all about inclination. I mean, you, I've, I've come across really interesting people all my life who had, um, you know, who had things to do beyond their, uh, you know, work or you know, professional life. You know, I don't think time is absolutely the wrong issue. i mean it's not even in you know it's excuse that cannot be even be allowed and um, it's uh, it's not about work hours and uh, alone i mean there are people you could work 12 hours a day and uh, that doesn't mean you uh, you can't have uh, alternative uh, interests and passions um, so i i would definitely say nobody should ever use you know lack of time as as 
as an excuse whatsoever. And it's it's important to have uh, you know interest and passion in life. Um, and frankly, it could be something that you do you know uh, as a professional. That's perfectly fine. I mean that that's a great uh, marriage of uh, both uh, you know personal and professional, and that makes you that much more uh, you know uh, dedicated to it. But uh, but what I meant is that it's it's about you know how do you connect to people? You know, uh, it's as simple as that. You know, uh, you connect to people at, at a different level, at an emotional level, and, uh, and it comes with uh, you know having uh, something to say, something to uh, you know a pathway in you know beyond uh, what you do at, at work. Um, I'd say like you know my uh, things. You know, uh, I like reading a lot of books. Um, so uh, you know uh, the whole uh, you know uh, the reading aspect of everything. I, I hike a lot, um, you know, uh, and you know the hiking angle was 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 a bunch of guys. Um, I, I travel fair bit too. So you know, there's uh, you know I have had uh, I have a fair bit of passions in life, and uh, that I uh, and try and pursue uh, to the extent I can.